Good morning and welcome to Life for the Nations Camarillo. Jesus is our Jehovah. Good morning. Welcome to Life for the Nations Camarillo. I'm Pastor Jen. 
I just want to welcome every single one of you here this morning. Um, my thought this morning as I was praying and thinking about so many of us is we have to determine and we have to decide, is my rock Jesus Christ or am I getting pulled in to the quicksand, having a foundation on the sands of this world? It can be anything. It's so quick the way we can fall down and we need to decide. My foundation is Jesus Christ. He is the one I trust. He gives me my purpose. He gives me not my destiny and not the quicksand of this world. It can be anything. It could be a friendship that you, you, your friend has failed you and she's not following the Lord, but you really love her and, and she's failed. And you're like, I feel so depressed. I feel so discouraged. I only want that one person. Don't let anything become a substitute in your life for the one true and amazing relationship that is Jesus Christ. Well, this morning I want us to get started. This is Pastor Nick, I'm Pastor Jen, and this is Life for the Nations Camarillo. And I'd like to get started right now on something that hit me, uh, and I think every single one of us has gone through something of this kind. We all do. It's when we go through testing. It's when we're going through the wilderness. You know, God always tests our faith, and it's painful sometimes. We're like, I don't like being tested. Oftentimes, it causes us to walk away from the Lord. I mean, have you had a great week of great success? Some of us are like, yes, I'm doing fantastic. Has the Lord answered all of your prayers? I mean, every single prayer. Have you finally seen your greatest desire finally fulfilled? I mean, think about it. What is your greatest desire? What's your greatest dream? Has it been fulfilled? If so, well then congratulations. I'm so glad. Enjoy that feeling of satisfaction. But know that if you've accepted Jesus Christ into your heart and he is living and, and reigning in your life, there's going to be more testing and more success to come. He is often pruning and preparing you for new and great victories that are to come. Well, this week I was reflecting on some of the hopes and dreams that I've had in my lifetime. Some of them have been fulfilled, yes. When my, in my teen years, my greatest desire was to just marry a, a, a very handsome husband and live in a very cold country. And I would pray, Lord, I just want to move. For me, it was Yukon Territory in Canada. For some reason, that sounded great because it was cold. And I lived in a very, very hot place, Hermosillo, Sonora. It was like 117. It felt like every day. And so I was always very, very hot, and I really disliked it. God doubled my reward. Not only did I get married to this amazing guy, but he moved me to Sweden, which was Europe, which another dream fulfilled. I got to go live in Europe. And he allowed me to have two beautiful children, and he allowed me to homeschool both of them. And, and, and another dream that I didn't even know I had was fulfilled. And I remember my early years of teaching in bilingual education in, uh, in San Diego at public school. Um, somebody said to me, you know, you could go and have your own business. And for me, that was just so overwhelming. I, my box was so small. My vision was so very tiny. All I had was a little dream of a little world with my husband and my children. God always has more for you and for me. Maybe it's something small, like you're like, I just really, that's my dream is to get married. But maybe God has you, he's preparing you for even greater things with your husband. And so you are preparing yourself for that moment, for those days ahead. Don't let the testing make you become depressed or discouraged. In Proverbs 13, 12, it says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Well, Jesus is our fulfillment. And he is our tree of life. Once we've made him Lord over our lives, there the new journey then begins. And our hopes and our dreams now are in him. And we don't become sick when things don't go our own way. Because that's what we want, right? Well, I don't want to feel sick right now. You know, you get the flu, you're laying on the bed and you're like, oh, I feel horrible. You don't want to, you can, it's discouraging to become sick. In your heart and in your mind, it becomes discouraging as well. When you become obsessed with something, you have to possess it. You have to see that one thing happen. And all you can do is fixate on that one thing you want and you become sick 
waiting for it to happen. What is your hope actually found on but quicksand? Like I mentioned earlier, we need to have our hope found in Jesus Christ. He is our fulfillment. Well, I stopped making Pastor Nick, I didn't know him at the time, but it was the fixation on a husband or a boyfriend or someone that would fill that emptiness in my life. And it was really that I needed Jesus to fill it. And he had to become my boyfriend, he had to become my husband, he had to become everything to me. And then God was able to bring my husband into my life. I wasn't ready for anything but idolatry, and he was going to fail. Every good and perfect gift that I have ever received, all my hopes fulfilled, came when I finally turned my eyes to Jesus Christ and walked away from all kinds of sin. Some of those sins were rebellion against the Word of God. I didn't like that I had to follow all the Ten Commandments, for example. That was too much effort. The first four were all about worshiping God, and I'm like, I don't want to do that all day. I had my own little agenda that I like to fulfill, and yet I, my heart kept crying out for what God had put into my heart, and it wasn't happening. And I just kept falling more and more into sickness of hope deferred. And I often wanted things going my way, on Saturday night, though, I wanted to go out dancing and drinking and then go to church on Sunday morning. I wanted to live both lives. It's like dancing on the edge of a sword, right? You're going to get cut up and hurt. And it's not going to be, and some of us fall back and get angry. We're like mad. Well, that's not fair. Why doesn't God do things the way I want them? I remember sitting on a train one time. I was going from Florence to Rome with a good friend. We were backpacking through Europe and she said I want my my boyfriend to ask me to marry him and I want to get married now I'm sick to death of waiting God always makes me wait and I'm sick of it and I remember looking at her and even though I wasn't very wise and I didn't really know a lot I just looked at her and I said but what if God doesn't have him ready what if he's not ready and she's like well you know, maybe God needs to get him ready. You know, it was just always this attitude of my way, my ideas, my plans, and you could sense the anger and rebellion in her heart. And this is what we need to avoid. When God puts you through testing, it's because he has great victory for you on the other side, but it must be in his timing. And oftentimes that's something we don't like. Oh, this is way too long. This is taken forever. God always is gently wooing and calling us out of that rebellion and that pride. One of the hardest things, and I'm going to be honest about this, the hardest things I've ever gone through is when I finally walked away from the world completely. I dropped out of the rebellion. I joined a church. I fully committed my life to Jesus Christ. And I walked away from partying. I was involved in ministry. But the dream that God had put in my heart to get married, for example, had not been fulfilled. I wanted to meet my husband. I wanted to get married. But what I was doing was like the old country western song, looking for love in all the wrong places. I was looking at in my own timing. I wanted my own way. I had my little group of friends and none of them were fulfilling me. I demanded that they fulfill me and it wasn't working out. God kept pruning me for his success. I had to walk away from some toxic friendships. I had to walk away from where God had placed me. God had placed me in a certain place. Sorry, he placed me there, and yet it wasn't the place I was meant to stay. He had more for me. Oftentimes we get stuck in a rut. We're in a classical church. We're very happy in the classical church. It's where we think we're meant to be. God remembers everything that I gave to him in that classical church, yet he had more for me. He wanted me to be filled with even greater power and victory and success. And that wasn't going to come by staying in that little box. It was a safe place. It was the only thing I knew. And so that's where I walked into, and that's okay. But when God tells you to start moving forward, start moving in a new direction, be ready to move in that new direction. And it was then that I met my husband. It was a painful thing to walk away from that church, that experience, but God said, okay, I've got something new for you. Something new, move into this new direction. In 1 Corinthians 2.9, it says, 
This is what the scripture mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. You see, the Holy Spirit needed to really come over me. It needed to be a powerful submersion into what is the real life of a Christian, and that is to move into the river of life that is the Holy Spirit. And oftentimes our churches do not teach this. They don't teach this. There, there's no empowerment. It's very much just the logos. It's just let's open up the word of God and let's read it word for word. And that is it. And there's just so much more, so much more that God has for each of us to understand. And Paul, he wrote a lot of the New Testament through the influence of the Holy Spirit, kept commending us to move forward in prophecy, in speaking in tongues. But so many churches are like, no, I've, I've shut that down. God knew I was in a classical church. He knew that that was what I was influenced by yet he's like jen i've called you into something greater and deeper will you trust me will you give up on the husband idea entirely and still trust me i had to i had to this morning another revelation hit me god gives things to me and i have to i i'm willingly giving them back to him so that dream was on my heart but i give it back i give it back lord when god is testing you he already knows the areas of weakness you still fall into. He knows them. He knows that his plans are best for you. He gives you his word that's full of every promise that is for those that walk in righteousness. It's also full of promises for those that refuse to walk in righteousness. Be prepared to open the word of God and have it reveal things that need to change in your life. He wants what's good for you, just like we want our children to have what is good. He needs you to walk in the authority that is given to you in Christ because Jesus' work is not completed. It's not completed on this earth yet. It's up to us to help complete the work of Christ. A lot of people are just like, oh yeah, Jesus is God and I, I, just, I just get to sit back and drink my coffee and move forward. No, you are to rise up and pray. You are to rise up with eyes that are full of what the Spirit of the Lord is showing you so that you are speaking life into a situation. He's training us to be champions. This is a new revelation for me. I have been learning this. I speak it. I speak it over people. He wants you. He loves you. You are precious to him. You are chosen. You are his champion. These are words that people need to hear. My mom right now is going through a great time of wilderness training. It's very difficult. But I speak those words into her life and I know that those words are nourishing her spirit, they're nourishing my spirit, and she's got roommates and so we're nourishing their spirits as well. Jeremiah 29, 11, a classical promise that everybody needs to embrace for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Prosper what, with financial gain? Yes. If you will give back to him all of your finances, he will prosper you. You need to be ready and willing to give up a lot of your dreams and desires, your fears, everything that you cling to, give it over to the Lord. Every indoctrination, perhaps narrative that you believe so strongly, give it over to him and let him return to you what it is that he wants you to learn and understand from that. He doesn't come to harm you, but to give you a hope in a future, what kind of hope? We talked about the hope in the beginning. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but he gives you a hope that is eternal, a hope that is alive, a hope that you are not going to have to worry about. Oh, what's gonna happen with that dream? Well, God is holding on to it for you. And he's like, come along, I've got it for you. Come right now. It's kind of like when our children are little and we have a gift for them and they're like, but I'm playing in my bedroom with, with, a, you know, with a pencil. No, come, I've got something for you. And it's huge, it's amazing, and it's awesome, but you're like, hey, I want to stay in my room and do my own little dumb thing. God has so much for us. Be willing and ready to go after all that he has. When you're going through difficult trials or temptations, and there's often a reason the Lord puts them in your, in your path. There's a point, points of contention that for many, can lead us into rebellion against him because we don't like it when he starts to try to show us difficult, takes us through trials, 
and it shows us areas of darkness in our life, and then we're like, eh. So 2 Corinthians 13, 5 is very, very much of a convicting Bible verse for me and for anybody. Examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Examine yourself. You'll know your faith is genuine when you cling to him and seek him and cry out Jesus when you are in your darkest, deepest pit of crisis or trial. Test yourselves. It says test yourselves. And how do you do that? By saying, Lord, test me. See, see where, what, what's coming up? What's bubbling up when I'm going through a big crisis? Because surely you will know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. Ouch. And what do we do if we fail? Do we run after what's convenient? I, I've been to Starbucks on a Sunday morning and I have seen multitudes of people sitting around in that coffee shop drinking their coffee and talking amongst themselves what have they done made it into their own little church time they're like fellowshipping and talking about humanity and human ideas and all that is nice i don't say that there's anything wrong but they have taken it as a substitute for god then it's wrong then they'll never feel that fulfillment as wonderfully as they want it to be they're maybe filling themselves up with good coffee. I'm sure it's very tasty. But also, they're also saying, I don't need God. So that's a rebellion. It's a painful thing. People don't like to be told, I need to submit to God, submit my plans, my dreams, surrender. Yes, surrender. Surrender and let him lead you into those green pastures, those cool waters. Anxiety is a real thing today. People are tormented, and it's because their real faith isn't found on Jesus Christ. They only believe 40% of the Bible, they say. There's, it's crucial, and I've had people confront me. I was going through a big crisis, and I ran to the one person I thought could fix everything. And she looked at me, and she said, where's your faith? I thought you believed in Jesus. What's going on? And although it was a mockery, I, I thanked her. I mean, I didn't thank her personally right at that moment, but I said, yes, where is my faith? Is it in this person to fix it? I've often done that. I fall codependently into relationships with other very strong and authoritative warrior type of gals, and I like the way they are champions, and so I follow them. And Jesus says, Jen, I've called you to be the champion, and I say that to you as well. Jesus has called you to be the champion, the warrior, the victorious one, not to follow that good friend that isn't following Jesus. And God has said, I have a better and more amazing plan for you. In our case, and I think in your case as well, if you're tuning in, accountability through great pastors. Now, our pastors are the champions that I am following, emulating their example, and their covering is what I am following. That's what I'm desiring. That's where I'm moving into, and it's not easy. It's not like they come and constantly pat me on the head and tell me how great I am. Instead, they're constantly looking, okay, what needs to be tugged, change, move? They nourish me with their sermons on, I, I have a training on Monday with the leadership, and then Thursday we have an evening service, and Sunday morning there's nourishment for my spirit when I tune in and tap in to my accountability. That's what God wants things to be that way. It's kind of like a soldier in the army who's just running around, not doing what he's told to do, not obeying and not following the company, and the bullets are flying. And where's his captain? Well, who knows? The guy isn't following anybody's orders. He's just running. Here's another example of some people who were promised something powerful, but when tested, some complain. This person complained. This person, person didn't really get the whole thing but finally they triumphed because of their faith god looks for people that are faithful here's something else that is very powerful that i've learned even though i failed many many times i'm not gonna lie i have absolutely failed i have always been willing to say god forgive me i failed to humble my heart before the lord this guy was able to do that as well this guy's name is abraham very famous Many of you have maybe heard of him, but he was called out of a place called Babylon 
to go into a promised land he'd never seen with children. He was promised children so vast they will rival the stars of the sky. Yet he was old, his wife was infertile. Abraham started to listen to the wrong voices to try to fulfill that promise. The hope deferred made him sick. He was like, I don't see how God's ever going to possibly make this happen. And so I am going to go and do things, listen to the wrong voices. In this case, it was his wife. She talks him into sleeping and becoming uh, married to this Egyptian maid of hers to hurry up God's promise of a son. Why would she be so foolish? Well, husbands will listen to their wives. That's why us wives need to be accountable to God to make sure that we don't force our husbands into doing something so incredibly foolish. And then Abraham made his own mistakes. He let Sarah get taken into another man's home by claiming she was his sister, not once, but twice, bringing lots of damage and plague into that household. Yet God continues to bless Abraham and lead him out of his failures. How is that possible? Again, Abraham had a heart of repentance, and he was faithful. Me, I have to be honest, I love Abraham. I think he's amazing. I hope someday to be that way. I hope someday to emulate that. He had great prosperity. He walked with God. And so I say, yes, that's what I want to do. But Jesus Christ is the one I cling to, not Abraham. His example is powerful. I don't cling to my husband. I don't cling to some best friend. I cling, or to a book, or to a ministry, or to a, I don't cling to anything. I leave it all to God. God, you have got this ministry, Life for the Nations Camarillo, and I give it back to you. All the money I'm making as a businesswoman, I give it back to you. Every, everything, Lord, that I love and hold dear, my own children, I turn them back to you because I know that your promises for them are greater and higher and much better, much bigger vision than I could possibly ever have. I repent when I cling on to things. And I pray that you will do the same thing. Just say, Jesus, forgive me for clinging on to these false ideas, these false narratives, for clinging on to, to things that are damaging. You know, maybe someone's given you a beautiful gift, but you know it it carries curses. It carries wrong ideas. It's carrying a wrong ideology. Some book someone gave me one time, and I read through it, and I was like, this book needs to go in the trash. It is garbage upon garbage. I can't believe this person let me even waste my time reading it. Well, that person, I don't know what came of that person. I don't, I don't really worry about that person. I know that my plan was to trash the book, and so I ripped it up and threw it out. So how does this all translate into our own lives? Abraham is called out of Babylon. You and I are called out of Babylon as well. Babylon is the world we live in. It's often the TV. Babbling, babbling, you know. They have the same narrative. Every commercial, every TV show is all about fornication, adultery, homosexuality. It's all about um, forcing that narrative so that it normalizes. Let's normalize it. Kids don't need to get married. Marriage is for dogs. We make little weddings for the dogs. Homosexuality, yeah, they should get married. But not regular man and woman. No, no, no. Well, God's covenant is for man and woman. It's a covenant where he says, go out and multiply. Go out and have more, more children, more spiritual children. Go have physical children. God wants us to be married because that's where the covering is found. That's where the protection, that's where the, the provision is found. When we walk under his covering, when we say yes to him and to his purposes in our lives. And he guarantees every single promise in his word through Jesus Christ. That's another problem for people, right? Oh, I like the promises of the God of God. They're great, but I'm not going to repent or change my lifestyle. And I don't believe in Jesus. I don't think those promises in the Bible are for you then. Remember, it must be in God's order and not yours. Tests can be long, they can be difficult, they can make us feel alone and abandoned. But God is always testing our faith so that we're purified. <clears throat> Spiritual tests 
often have great and powerful outcomes when we are faithful and patient and obedient in Christ. And that's why I cling to Jesus Christ and to my pastors. They are our accountability. Nick and I, Pastor Nick and I, we're always charging ourselves up, right? We're always sharpening ourselves. Yes, we'll share something that we learned. We share, sharpen our children and they sharpen us back. Here's what I learned. Here's what I got to do. Here's how I was able to, 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 to teach somebody, to, to minister to somebody, to release the word of the Lord to somebody into somebody's life. And Jesus is our great example. He himself, he was baptized by John and when he came up out of the waters, and that's a good example. You need to all get baptized by water and we need to come up out of those waters and let the Holy Spirit then baptize us. A voice of heaven proclaims over Jesus and he proclaims it over you when you go and you say, Jesus, come into my life. Jesus was told, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And Jesus says that over each one of you when you accept him into your life, you receive that same gift. God will say that over you because you have the blood of the lamb covering you, the blood of my son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for your sins. I now invite you and say, you are my chosen one. You are my, my beloved. You are the one that I love. And I want to use every gift that I've planted inside of you. And I want you to move now in the direction that I have called you into. Jesus was then taken into a wilderness time, a time of testing. God will call you into a time of testing. He wants to make sure your faith is strong in him. So Jesus went into that time of of, of testing. He fasted for 40 days. He prayed. He endured every trial by using the word of God. He destroyed the lies of the enemy. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. I have no doubt that everything came together. And it is our perfect example of how to get rid of all the demonic uh, oppression that comes upon us. It's usually falling into three categories. It's either fame. You want popularity. You want everybody to look at you. It's either fame, it's, the, it's, it's a woman or a man or, you know, the sensuality of the whole thing. You want that, you want to look sexy, you want your clothes to look the best, you want everyone's eyes on you. Or it's making more money. I want more money. More, 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 more. Anything can become that. You know, you've got your business, you want more money. It's all about making money. I get checked all the time. What are you doing the business for? Well, it's to give not money back to the Lord first. First, it's for God. And as he multiplies the business, I'm able to give more to him, and he's able to give more to me. And that's what Jesus wants for each one of you. Jesus was faithful, humble, patient. He didn't rush or complain about that process. It was hard to be in the desert for 40 days. I don't know that there was a lot of water or food. It says he was fasting, that's usually food. But afterwards, when the devil went away and looked for another opportune time to come and destroy his life, because he's always looking for an opportune time to come and look at your life as well, to kill, steal, and destroy, you are strengthened and nourished afterwards, during the time, by God. My God, I have no doubt that the Holy Spirit was nourishing his spirit in spite of the fact that he felt alone, perhaps alone and abandoned. He knew he was being nourished. He knew where to go for his source of hope, his source of life. And that is a great example of spiritual warfare. You have to know how to fight off the devil in your life. You have to know who the enemy is. The enemy isn't uh, some people that have a belief system. They're not your enemy. It's not the fact that you don't have finances. That's not your enemy or your husband or your wife. Your enemy is the devil. And he will puppet and use any weak person that he can to come in and destroy your life, whether it's somebody you know or not, whether it's social media or TV, he will look to distract you. He will look to pull you off your purpose and out of your alignment. So you have to know who you are in Christ. You have to know that he is your rock and your foundation. And you have to build yourself up into the word of God every single day. You are chosen like Abraham. You are loved. You are wonderfully created. You carry the authority of Christ if you say yes to Jesus coming into your life as Lord. And the blood of the Lamb is over you. 
and you are called then as a commission to go out and make disciples and destroy the work of the devil. Go back and get all that land back, all that territory. Abraham was promised a land. Well, it was full of a group, different tribes of people. The Hittites and the, Phil the Philistines, I don't know if the Philistines at that point, but the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, they were all invading invaders of that land. And God wanted Abraham to go in and conquer that land. You and I are called not to get rid of people or people's groups, but to conquer the land. In other words, bring the kingdom of God into the area where you are living. Do you live in a certain area? We all live somewhere. I live in Camarillo, California, so we go out every Wednesday night and we pray over this city. We pray over the land of California. I own a little piece of land here in California. The dirt we were gardening yesterday is California, and so I pray over this state. God wants you to put that into action. He wants you to pray for others constantly. Look to see who it is that God is calling you to, to minister to in some way. Submit your God. Submit to God. Remind him of, of remind him of all of his promises that he's spoken over your life. You can remind him. He loves to be reminded of his of the word of God. He loves it. Hebrews 4:16. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace and help in our time of need. In our greatest time of testing and wilderness cry, you need to look for the Lord. Look to him. Keep your vision on Jesus. Say, yes, I will go through this time of testing and I'm going to let you purge all that needs to be cleansed and purified out of my life because I want to be used greater in greater measure to minister to people. I want your plans over my life. Make sure you've got pastors like we do. And I recommend them. If you are not part of Vida para las Naciones Internacional, please tune in at 11 a.m. today because they will be preaching and they are powerful. They are amazing. And they'll hold you accountable. They'll lift you up in prayer. The Holy <laughs> Spirit will flow through when you are part of the ministry that God has called you to be part of. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Ask for his truth. He's not afraid of you saying, I, I really don't know what the truth is, but I am so sick with my hope deferred. I want to be fulfilled. And Jesus is my fulfillment. Okay, well then I'll give everything over to you, Lord. Everything. Malachi 3.16, this was another awesome revelation this week, is that God writes down uh, in a book of remembrance all the things that you have done for him. Malachi 3.16, then those who fear the Lord, I am a person who fears the Lord. That means I honor him. I fear him. I don't want to do anything out of, out of the, what he has called me to do, but also nothing of sin. I don't want his anger on me. He's angry at sin. He loves me. He doesn't want me walking in a pig pen, staying in the pig pen with the swill, with the, with the pigs and the, the disgustingness of that. Instead, he wants me to fear him, walk with him, be, be completely um, rejoicing, calm, clear, ready to go where he's called me to go. And those who feared the Lord spoke with each other, were to talk to each other with people that love the Lord, and the Lord listened to what they said. He's listening. Do you know he's listening to you right now, and he's listening to your words? What are you saying right this minute? Are you... Proclaiming his goodness, or are you complaining about your circumstances? In his presence, a scroll of remembrance was written to record the names of those who feared him and always thought about the honor of his name. He's writing things down. What are you saying? So our pastors, they cover us, they hold us accountable, they teach us, they lead us, and they taught us this passage. And its promise is to, it holds up when you go through a wilderness of testing. Look for the wonderful outcome when you focus on him. Thankful, ready to declare his goodness and willing to tell your story. Are you willing to humble yourself and say, I was in rebellion, I was in sin, I made these choices, and this is where I am today because of it. Tests will come into your lives. Every single day you have a choice to humble yourself before God to ask him for, your, for his power and strength and to have success in those assignments with a grateful heart 
thanking him ahead of time for the victory, or you can complain, or you can continue to bellyache, or you can turn away from him in rebellion, but he will give you the victory over everything you're facing. Let's pray about that right now. Father God, I just thank you so much for this morning. I bless each person that's tuning in this morning. Tune in our hearts, Lord. The radio station has many frequencies, and so when we turn the knob, we want to find the one that has the music or the person speaking. I want to hear your music. I want to hear you speaking to me. I turn the frequency of my heart to you alone, Lord my God. I praise you, Jesus. You are the one that is holding me up. You are the one that is giving me all the dreams and fulfillment that I could ever need. You are my hope. You are my life. You are my faith. You are where I set my eyes towards. And so I pray right now in the name of Jesus for every person that is tuning in, that is hungry, thirsty, has dreams unfulfilled, are tired, wants different things, but nothing ever seems to go the right way that they want. It always seems to always fall apart. There's always crises. There's always issue. There's always contention. And so I pray, Father, for each one of us, because we have to walk in obedience to your word, and that often doesn't sit well with us. We don't like that. But, Father, right now we repent. Say that. I repent in the name of Jesus for walking in rebellion, for walking in complaining, for saying, Lord, I'm going to fulfill my own destiny. I'm going to go out after my own dream because you haven't done it, and I don't care about your timing any longer. We often complain. We demand, we want to force things, but you, Father God, you call us into action. You say, my child, if you would trust in me, I will lead you to something greater and bigger, more amazing. Get out of that little box, get out of that little world you like to live in that's very comfortable, and move into this new area. Even though it's scary, do you have the faith to trust in me? And I pray that each person has that faith each person sees that victory this week, this day, as they release their dreams to you so that you will re return them to you. you. Jesus returns dreams to us that we have when we release them to him. And that is what I pray over each person in the name of Jesus. And yes, the dream I had of getting married is right here. I praise God. Thank you, Lord, for such a great life that I have now. I want that for you. I want you to walk in all that victory and all that success. I want you to go through every testing with his perfect hand holding on to you, leading you each way. When you can't hear his voice, it's because you've clogged up your ears with some distraction. Don't let Satan in. Close those ear gates, those eye gates, your heart, your mind, so that you are walking and listening only to what he wants. I'm going to turn the time over now to Pastor Nick, and then we can talk afterwards. <clears throat> so today I want to talk about the fruit of the Spirit. So I start with Galatians 5, 6, and 10. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of your flesh. Mm -hmm. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. But these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. So Paul here tells the Galatians and also us to read like, I guess the idea that when he wrote down it was like, it wasn't only for them, it was meant to be kind of spread out to kind of teach uh, different churches. Uh, that we should walk by the Spirit. Since then we will not do what the flesh desires. Since uh, we know that the Spirit is, is against the flesh, then the flesh should be against the Spirit. They're like in opposition. So when we walk by the Spirit, we do what pleases God. When we walk by the flesh, we do what pleases our flesh. So in 18, that, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are, you are not under the law. So what, what does Paul mean with this thing? When we walk in the Spirit, following what God's Word is telling us, we are uh, wanting, uh, we are walking in His life. And his truth. And we will not now follow the desire of the flesh because uh, we are following what the word of God says. So, but when we are 
following the desires of flesh. Now we are under the law. If you look like at the Ten Commandments, uh, they don't condemn when you live according to walking in the Spirit. Like when you're when you're walking according to His word, it doesn't condemn it because now uh, you basically walk in the way He wants you to walk. So, like it says in Psalms 199, how can a young man keep his way pure mm -hmm. by keeping it according to your word? Mm -hmm. So when we are walking according to his word, we are keeping our way pure. Mm -hmm. And mind in that, now the deeds of the flesh is evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, uh, uh, enmity, 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 Strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, uh, carousing, and things like this, of which I form with you, just as I have formed with uh, uh, as I have formed with you, that those who practice such a thing will not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So that's quite a harsh word, are so if we read through the Ten Commandments, we can see that this list that he gave, uh, I mean, there is more, I and mean, he said, uh, like, um, such a thing. It basically falls under different of the commandments. Uh, in verse 20, it starts with idolatry. Uh, and I remember something I listened to that uh, it wasn't too long time ago. Uh, how stubbornness can it be just a twin to idolatry. I never mm -hmm. thought about it before. Awesome. But a stubborn person makes an idol of his own opinion. Wow. Which is now a form of adultery. That was kind of like, that. wow, I never thought about that one. So, uh, so maybe stubbornness. It's a fantastic revelation. So maybe stubbornness might not be a good uh, lesson. Uh, Were you convicted in your own life? Well, I'm pretty sure maybe some of us can be stubborn about it. So then you have to think, okay. Am I stubborn in the right way? I mean, it could be that, let's say, you might be stubborn in the sense like you want to follow the word of God. Yes, then I can. Then that's good. Then it's good, but I mean, sometimes you might have your own ideas. But if this. you have your own interpretation of the word of God and yeah. it's wrong, that's that, a stubborn. That is, yeah. That's stubborn. True. So, so that, that was just kind of like an interesting way to think about it. Like, that's yeah. powerful. So, so stubbornness might not be a good uh, trait. Well, and it oftentimes yeah. in children they refuse to obey, mm -hmm. and they, parents are if they applaud that, then mm -hmm. they're applauding rebellion, yeah, and disrespect. But then also that uh, what he kind of works now that 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 who practice this thing will not inherit the kingdom of God, which is that's um, that should be like a workout called no, we have to turn around and follow the uh, walk by the Spirit. As well. And the next verse uh, is basically where I kind of want to type for today and, and it's 22 now. But, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such a thing there is no law. Uh, some pressure we have all heard about the fruit of the Spirit. And when we think about fruit, what comes into your mind? An apple. Yes, that's beautiful. I love apples. I mean, also when the, that's kind of like when you think about like the, the knowledge of like the, the, the fruit tree. of the knowledge of good and evil wasn't well, necessarily like an apple, apple, but you think well, of it. Yeah, that's kind of like the first thing. That Lemons, mind, dates, figs. At least for me, so I'd be red apple. Yeah. Uh, and then like I kind of think like the red apples, like in a green lush tree, you see like how the red thing kind of sticks out. Yeah. In a green lush tree, but we hope our tree outside will do pretty soon enough. <laughs> Around, but listen, I think it has a lot of flowers, uh, so we have hope. Hopefully, it, it won't be a okay. Hope deferred. Hope deferred, yeah, no, we want those apples to go. Yeah, that's the matter. So, this two list are different kind of fruit, or should have fruit. And even Jesus mentioned this in Matthew 7 15 to 20. The the beware of, the of the false prophets who come to you in sheep. Loading, mm. but in where there are the revenous wolves. Mm. That's what we can probably see today in mm. society. Like, you see, like, these people on the TV, like, promise this and this, you have to do this because it's the best, but they are 
Sometimes they ask wars in sheep's clothing. They're lying. So they have a different They're agenda. Speaking really. words of lies, yes. Uh, you, will be, you will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from uh, thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, mm -hmm. but the bad tree bears the bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit. This was kind of interesting that a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Mm. Nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Mm. Every tree that does not bear a good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruit. That's right. So we will know them by the fruit. And that's what Paul is talking about the fruit of the spirit. Uh, the fruit of the spirit is is what the spirit is producing in our life. Mm -hmm. When we feed ourselves with God's word and act on it, we will cause this fruit to grow. And we can see it's, it's like a process. Uh, when we have God's spirit in us, we should start to see fruit uh, be produced in our life. Uh, but what if um, I am naturally a patient, loving, and gentle person? How can I know that it's the fruit of the Spirit and not just my amazing self? But it, uh, there was something here. So, uh, let's see if I might come there. Uh, that's, I, I, can, I can talk to you later. So, okay. So, okay. Yeah, I, I might come there later. So. so, when we have God's Spirit in us, like what I said, we, we, should, we should start to see the fruit produced in our life. If you go back to verse 22, the first thing you notice is that it's set for fruit and not fruit. So it's a singular fruit uh, that has like this different flavors or uh, manifest, manifestation to be a the right word. But it's basically as one fruit that now should, should produce all this different kind of, so that's maybe kind of answer a little bit on your question that we should see all this kind of traits and not only like maybe one or two. It should be like all three because that's but we have one fruit, we should see all the flavors in our life. So an, another thing is, is, you mentioned all the ones that are not the fruit of the Spirit, they're the fruits of the flesh. And yeah. so if we're prideful of how amazing we are, because we're gentle and sweet and good, then, it might then be, we're just seeing that it's just then, all the flesh. That, that, then it might be more like a, a counterfeit. Yeah. So, yeah. so that, that's an interesting thing, that it can be counterfeit too. Yeah, if you're naturally so sweet and so patient and you just assume that that must be you naturally are amazing and God's just gifted you with those gifts, but none of the other manifestations are coming yeah, through. Yeah, I mean, that, let's see, if, if you have, like, you, you might be... You're not faithful, you don't have self-control. Yeah, I mean, that, that, like, I mean, you're like the opposite, that, that you could probably trust me, I guess, maybe it's more like some of... You just keep insisting how yeah. loving you are and how full of peace you mm. are and how joyful, but you're not kind. Yeah. Not good. So, so I mean, the, 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 the Spirit of God is going to not produce all the fruit, but when we cannot grow, because, I mean, when we accept Christ, I mean, we, not, we might not see it right away, and it's not like one day, you know, how do we see, like, all this kind of fruit? I mean, it's a process. The well, and the other thing is this. A lot of people might manifest those gifts naturally or because they're following whatever they believe, but, but the, this is in the Spirit. But the question is, do they produce all of them? And is it in the spirit? Yeah, that's. Is it in Jesus Christ? A lot of people are like, oh no, I am all those things without Jesus. Well, then they're not of the spirit. No, no, then, then it's more like that it's something from. It's just something yeah, from your yeah, own yeah. natural flesh. So that, uh, so like we can't have too much just, just a manifestation, a manifestation of the truth of the spirit. So there's no like. You limit. No, that there's no limit. Uh, it, it's it's not like wrong if you have too much, like if you have a lot of manifestation of the different kind of fruits. I mean, it's it's not like uh, there's no law against there's no, law there's against no limit. It. There's yeah. no limit in that sense. So and then if you're not confident, you say, well, each one does. So we have first the love is the word of God. It's the love that we give and don't think that we need to get anything in return. It's like a selfless love. We just want to give up. We just, uh, we just want to get like yeah, because we that's just what we want to do out of just to help because uh, we want to give and we don't expect anything in return. Mm, that's good. And joy, when we think about joy, 
we might think about happiness, like jumping around and like uh, laughing, well, jumping around and all that stuff. And we expect to, when we expect to, when we see like a person, and we accept, uh, and uh, when we expect that person to see that person like a jaw, we cannot, we cannot see, we can expect them to have like uh, jump around that kind of stuff, but joy is not happiness. Uh, we can have joy, joy, where happiness does not exist. I mean, uh, we might go through some tough time, but we still yes. have joy. Yes, so it's people, testing. Yeah, people might associate joy with like an emotion, um, or that it's like some manifestation of like an emotion, so that the person now that has joy must be like, well, they're bouncing around because it's joyful. But uh, but then it would kind of like if we kind of assume that joy is like we have to kind of jump around because of all the stuff. Now can I go contradict it with the next one, which is uh, peace? Because in mean, peace, like you approach it with peace, you don't expect that person to kind of jump around and be, yeah. That kind of like. Uh, Are you trying to say that we're not supposed to be jumping around and being? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, joyful? I mean, what, what I say is like joyful doesn't mean that you have to jump around. That's, that's, it, that's, it just means that during yeah, a time, time of crisis, you're still you're still at, like, you're still at perfect peace yeah, and you're enjoy. Still at perfect peace. It's almost like you kind of go like hand in hand. Well, I guess they all kind of go hand in hand. They should all yeah. go hand in hand. Yes. So, because uh, I mean, you can expect that joyful is like jumping around, but now peaceful is like that. You're supposed to be kind of like calm um, and that kind of stuff. Now kind of conquer each other. So that's. So, so that's not really just get rid of the yeah. idea and yeah. the imagery of joy being something where you're jumping around. It's more like you're calm, mm -hmm. no matter what the circumstances. So we, we can associate with, like the word with, peace with a person yes. while it's still calm. And uh, but joy characteristic is more not what happens to us, but that, that well, no matter what happens to us, we will always have joy because we know that we belong. To and he is always with us. And this will also give us peace. Now that you see, like, we can like, go hand in hand, that we know that God is with us all the time. He should give us peace, no matter what happens. We know that he has this situation in his hand, that he is in charge. He is the one who has all that glory in his hand. So, sure, we might do two times. We don't like. Uh, and it could be the fifth, it could be emotion, all that stuff. It might be tough time, but it could be like we lose a job. Uh, we have like opposition somewhere. Uh, we, you name it, everything that's basically that's, that should kind of remove our peace. Like, like I mean, we see like this um, this thing, the pandemic, or what happened. Like a or, lot of people lost their peace. Or uh, yeah, and, and they still have anxiety. Yeah, they still have anxiety. Because the TV keeps fear mongering us all into more anxiety. But then, how about if you've got secondary effects from some of the pandemic things that happened and you're stuck now in a situation where you realize you have made a massive drastic big mistake and you're paying the consequences of it yeah and then you, what is it what do you need to do there well you need to repent yeah, you need to and you need to be ready to say lord i, I want to hear your voice mm -hmm. and i turn my life over to you i don't want to live in judgment any longer because he will show you the areas that need to change in your life yeah, so I mean, uh, repent from that. Uh, did you listen to God's voice or did you listen to the... Was it fear that drove you well, into your decisions? Well, what was it like, was it the word, the word of the world, what they were kind of bombarded oh, with? Or yeah. did you ask God if this was uh, patterns for today? So then you had to repent. But then I know that God also had, uh, he is a God of miracle. He is a God of healing. That's right, amen. Like, uh, that's one of his name. He is our healer. So yes. if, if there might be some second. Uh, and it can also be that, uh, like what I mentioned, like this, uh, be that, yeah, but even if whatever happens, we still have mm. uh, And we can also see what happens right now with the whole kind of thing, but more, we still have peace because we know that God is in charge. That's right. And no yeah. matter what, what happens in the world, God is still going to have the last war. Yes. He has the victory. He has the ultimate victory, like we read in the, in the, in the Word of God, that He has the ultimate victory. Like, I think Daniel says that he, his kingdom is going to basically subdue all other kingdoms. Amen. 
And then we have the next one is patience or long suffering. Uh, that means kind of putting up with stuff a long time. And in Jesus, in Jesus had long suffering. In Matthew 7, he says, how long should I put up with you? Well, it's like that gal on the train where she's like, how long do I have to wait for my boyfriend before he finally figures out his life so that we can get married? Well, she wasn't demonstrating that fruit of the Spirit yeah. at all. So, uh, so it was more like now that they did not understand things. That was like, how, well, how long do I have to kind of put up with that you don't understand this thing? But then what we also see cases where he, he was not long suffering. For instance, when he went to the temple and turned over the tables. Uh, that was not, but... Uh, it wasn't because it, it was it a was, state of it impatience. Was, it was more like, no, it was more, it, it like, was more like a kind of like, okay, correction. do we tolerate sin? That's the thing, that do we tolerate sin? And he did not tolerate sin. It's, it, because it's like it, he was a policeman at that moment yeah. who was pulling over the person that was jackrabbiting around at 95 miles an hour that was going to kill everybody around him. Does, he said, no, we've got to take this out. Does, I mean, he knew that the people who were behind it, they knew better. They knew what was true, but they were still doing a hand with this thing. So that's what he said. He, was, he wasn't going to put up with it. He wasn't going to put up with it. And that's the same thing with us. Are we going to uh, tolerate sin? Yes. Or are we going to say, no, we're not going to tolerate sin? And then we have gentleness. <clears throat> Jesus was gentle with the sinners. Like, now can I come back to the previous one then? But he was harsh with the Pharisees. But when we read the word, he must face us. He was Well, the Pharisees were supposed to be yes. leading the people as a good pastor. Instead, they were ravenous wolves. So, so yeah, it was like, yeah. Uh, uh, they were just looking for power. Yes, yeah, so I was saying, so he knew that, like, yeah, he was, he kind of goes back to previous on patient that the people who did not have understanding and didn't have the knowledge that he was patient with those. But the Pharisees, they had the knowledge, they had the they were, I mean, they know. See, the who much is given, much is expected. So, so he were, expected them so, so to that, know why, and to recognize him. So that's why he was more harsh than us because yes. they should know better. They should know better. Uh, so we that's why he was, uh, he was kind of like, uh, so they, they had the knowledge, but now it was the stubbornness. Well, we Christians in the United States mm -hmm. have the word of God. We have access to it freely. And yet we continue to walk in rebellion and in sin. Mm -hmm. We continue to follow what the world is telling us instead of the word of God. Yes. And then we also have kindness. So I have to kind of check out the difference between this word and I found this kind of example. But kindness is expressed by an outward action to meet the needs of others. And uh, that to, to do without any type of like harshness or resentment. Gentleness is meekness and committed that even if like convey power or control, does so like in a sensitive and a reserve rather than like in a authoritarian manner. Authoritarian. So that can like that can be even like if you have like a box. And it's something that you can like a box you might be as to read a script and kind of read it down, but then you can also have boss. He has like the authority, but he do more than that gentle way. Um, so then, so they can like, uh, like different ways when it comes to bossing. I, I definitely prefer the gentle one. Well, I prefer yeah. the one that's going to know how to be strong and authoritarian yeah. when he needs to be with maybe, you know, uh, clients that are due, about past due on their bills or, you know, mistreating, you know, the co-workers or the workers. I'd rather have someone like that. Um, but also, I don't need to have a tyrant yeah, breathing that, down that, my that's, neck, that's the micromanaging tyrant, yeah. me, yes. and, and always dangling the, the, the carrot of, I'm going to fire you if you don't do exactly what yes. I say. That That's evil. That's that, that, wrong. That's more out of fear. I'm just trying to just uh, control out of fear. Yeah. And then I had the word goodness. So what does this goodness really mean? Then? So I heard someone say that if you look up this word, it really means generosity. Mm -hmm. So, like Jesus, he was always willing to give up power of God to the poor. Uh, so so that was kind of the interesting thing, like general author that we should, it should also be a, a like the, one of one flavor of the truth is that we should be generous. Mm. Faithfulness is uh, steadfastness, mm. consistently or obedience. Uh, so in the case of the fruit of the spirit that we are we believe what the Bible says about God. Yes. We, we trust that what God has written down in His Word is what is true. And that's, what, that's what we are working on. That's what 
they sell faith in this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Because only faith in us and faith is like faith in the same word. So if we have our faith, we have put our faith that God works in this tree. That's right, amen. And then we have also a uh, next word is self control. Uh, in the King James, it's, um, it says uh, temperance, uh, which is a Greek word from uh, Ancretia. So this is my question. Uh, so, what does self control mean? Does it mean that you're self screening myself? Well, is it more like control myself from doing bad stuff? Uh, let's see, do I control myself from slapping someone? Or is that what the self control really means? Yeah. Uh, another word, if you look, in, look up this thing, is uh, self govern. Uh, so, when we read the word of God, it teaches us how we should live. Mm -hmm. And uh, how to govern ourselves. That's right. Amen. So, I mean, in some sense, it's kind of self controlling ourselves, but like we should have in the way we should do it, but also like how are we supposed to govern ourselves? So the Holy Spirit teaches us. Well, and in 2 Timothy 1 7, for God has not given us a spirit of timidity or to be weak or, we or fearful, but a power, but a have power and love mm -hmm. and sound judgment. So, that sound judgment is what we're yeah. talking about here. So, so the Holy Spirit teaches us how we should act in certain so this fruit of the spirit is in our lives will help us to know how to how to govern ourselves in, in every situation. Um, someone said like it's uh, yeah no anyway uh, moving forward. I'm moving forward. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit is teaching and reminding us that the Bible says how we are supposed to live. Um, then it's up to each one of us to choose to bow our knees and do the will of God. And to govern ourselves and like act according to the will of God. So it's a. Uh, so we have to continue to actually read the word of God for for this group, uh, singular group, but the different uh, flavors, uh, to kind of produce, continue to us, uh, we produce more and more so that, that it will be shown in our lives. Uh, just then, like what it says, uh, on the truth of. You will, you will see them on the you will see them on the page of what you just said in the in that video. Amen. Lord, so, so we ask thank for that you have given us the Holy Spirit. You have warned us to produce this truth in our life, so that, that it will show who you are, that it will show your kingdom, that it will be that ambassador to the Lord. That that will show uh, that it will be attracting people to your kingdom. And that's what prayer right now. We don't walk by the flesh, but we walk by the spirit. Because we want to walk by the spirit. We don't want the, the, the stuff of the flesh uh, dull what we are doing in our life. We want mm. your spirit to us. Hallelujah. That we are Sharpen us, Lord. Yes. We are not ready to go because we are light in the world. Thank you you put us as a light in the world, which mm -hmm. is a part of you. put us as a sad one. And Lord, that we want to be a soft and we want to be a light. Lord, that people are, that we can show their. That we are holding the way to you, Lord. That we are drawing people to your kingdom. That we are that ambassador, Lord. We are uh, proclaiming that the kingdom of God is here. Like when you walk on him, Jesus, that you said that the kingdom uh, of God is as a path. And that's where the kingdom of God is here. Proclaim that your kingdom is here. And that uh, with yes. that kingdom also we have power. We have mm -hmm. authority mm -hmm. over, over the walks in this world. We have authority over sickness. We have authority over demons. We have um, all the stuff Lord, that that uh, you have given us because you have all that authority in hand. So just pray right now, help us to uh, get rid of this uh, fleshly desire and just have a desire to only walk by the spirit. That we are just a living word that we let you free us. Um, that the growth in our lives, that more and more food are producing, more and more. Uh, Flavors of this food or the tradition in all all this flavors in our life. Lord, we ask pray for this food. We ask pray for the food that we have to do wherever we go, Lord. We ask pray for this food. Amen. 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 Well, we're so glad you joined us this morning. Um, if you have any questions, if you want to talk to us, you can contact us by private message. And we're welcome to hear from all of you. We're so very glad that you were here this morning. Um, our pastors, 
we recommend and this is their platform and we honor them and we're so very grateful to them for allowing us to be here on this platform. Our host is Jacqueline Maya Flores, Vida para las Naciones Internacional. And like I mentioned earlier, they'll be preaching at 11 a.m. here on this platform. So please join us and uh, have a wonderful week. Great week. Happy Memorial Day and uh, have a wonderful time with your family as you remember and we honor those that have passed away serving our country. Have a wonderful weekend.